<laughs> I, I had one month in Venice with the Global Art Project and then I always, I'd, I'd made friends with Alison B. Cook, um, who's a, a cold wax artist. I know of her. I don't, haven't met her, but I know of her, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided I'd give myself a, 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 a three-day um, three little, little visit to meet Alison while she was teaching in um, Florence. Okay. And so I hopped on the train, I book, booked up three nights in, in Florence and the moment Alison and I met, we were just like kindred spirits. It was just incredible. Wow. And by the, our last night together, we were sitting having dinner, which she'd been, she'd been taking me to all of these like really beautiful patina walls and her and Bobby, we were, walked all around and we were just snapping photos and we loved to say, oh, oh, look at that mark, isn't it amazing? Look at the texture, look at the colour. And we were just like, and Bobby was just like, oh, okay, you know, that's, yeah, they're getting on really, really well. But the last night, we decided we were, at a, we were having a really beautiful meal and we both spoke about the fact that we wanted to, we both like using um, unconventional things to make our marks with, um, whether it was a squeegee or a, or a scraper or something like that. And she said, oh, I've always wanted to make my own brushes. And I said, oh, my gosh, so did I. Oh, okay. And so, so we set each other a challenge. And the challenge was was that we would, you know, we would do it and we would share, you know, share our experiences and our mark making. Well, Alison finally got round to making her, I think, four brushes and they were just like a bit, bit of a, a twig <laughs> with wire and, 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 you know, something on the, the top. And she showed them to me and I thought, oh, my gosh, I could better, better pull my finger out and, and get going. <laughs> But then I got so interested in looking at the history of it all and it was like where artists are just instinctual about wanting to make their own mark and, you know, it put me back into my child, you know, my younger, when as a child, I always wanted to, you know, I've always drawn and, you know, like, you know, again, when I was a child, my mother would give me, you know, a set of, you know, a brand new box of colouring in pencils and yeah. but then start drawing on the walls and I would I would, you know, there was a our mantelpiece or a fireplace was cement rendered. And I used to imagine kind of like they were little islands and I would draw <laughs> around them and I'd go on this journey. Wow. And so I started I, I started making the brushes and out of, you know, really unconventional things like native plant fibres and, you know, when I made the first mark, it was just like, oh. I saw oh. you had an image and I don't know if it was on your website or where I saw it, but I think you had either framed it maybe. It was like the first mark that a yeah. brush you'd made had just made yeah. and you were like, that's the first mark it made. And I thought, oh, that is so cool that you captured that and then you saved it. Because the brushes in themselves are objects of art. You know, anyone would say that. Anyone. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. And gorgeous. But, but it's also about like, you know, like when, when people start making them, they become so attached to their brushes. And, you know, then they say in the, in the first, in, in all of the, every single class, I don't want to use this. This is my first brush. And oh. then, I, then I always do the demonstration and they go, oh, my gosh, they can't, they're just biting at the bit to then start doing it. And, you know, they get, then they, I just say, look, you know, you can photograph your brushes and yeah. you'll be able to make them better next time. Or, you know, you're always going to have that memory of that, of that first mark and that, that brush as well so a lot of my brushes over in that that particular um, case that I've made that's the one that I use all of the time some of those are five-year-old brushes that and I've so what had. you're saying though is that you know um, because I've, I've read up about you know how you kind of collect your materials some things are not meant to last forever like plant material or so you're saying that if they make it out of something that's not meant to live forever don't feel like it's too precious use it get the mark, remember how you did it, and then make another one. Is that, is that your message? Yeah. I, like like in, in, um, I just taught in Adelaide and um, there are a lot of people were travelling. So I had, I had people that travelled from the UK, from New Zealand, from Bruni Island and Sydney in my class. So okay. some of those and some of the tutors wanted to buy some of my brushes, but they thought we can't get them through right. customs. So... Yes. You know what? What I do is is I teach people now how to make their brushes so that they can 
they can travel in these little cases. Oh. And but you know what I what I love about the more ephemeral brushes is is they've got probably more potency about them because they're a record of that time oh, and man. that place. Yeah. So you know, for me, it was all about. Um, you know, uh, the the big reason why I wanted to to explore my mark making was that somebody told me I wasn't a disciplined artist, and I got really angry about that. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I really wanted to start exploring my own visual language, and out of five years of of doing these courses now, and me exploring them from you know massive great big two meter brushes so it's great big heads on them um you know i now understand my language so much more right. but i'm still I'm, I'm still really open to the unexpectedness of the mark yeah. and me pushing my own boundaries as well about you know like i don't know about you as an artist but i always struggle if i've had a break i've just had a break because my daughter hasn't been well and with a broken ankle and so you know like i've been doing small little things but to create big things again is you know oh i've got to i've got to prepare surfaces i've got to work on a big size and you know how am i going to start again and you know even after all of these times of exhibiting i'm you know, I still go through all of those things. But it also drives me as well because when I get to that point where I don't know what I'm doing, I've got to remember that, you know, it's, you know, there's an adrenaline rush when I have to change it, when I've got to wipe out something to make it work and to let go of the part that I think is too pretty or it's too nice. And yeah. that's the thing that, when I then I lose myself in my work, I realized that that was what was holding me back. Yeah, yeah, it was too precious, it's too pretty. Yeah. That feeling. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I think the whole thing about um, taking breaks, um, because life happens, you know, many things in life interrupt our work in the studio, and then we have to walk in again, and it feels a little hard to get back into it. But, um, you know, I agree with you that just um, sometimes the hardest thing to do is just the very first mark. And once you've made it, then, you know, and it's um, for me personally, um, I talk a lot about play because I think play is an easy entry point. There are no expectations. And if we can just play, which most of us can do if we kind of really try hard. For us adults, I think sometimes it is hard to think about play with no expectations. But if you can do that, then it's like, um, the art will take care of itself. I think yeah. you know, we just have to get that ball rolling and the ball feels so huge when we have been away from our studio. It's like, it's like a huge ball, but just yeah. a little push. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's all good. So um, maybe we could talk a little bit about, um, uh, and, and we're still formulating our plan, you know, for the, the workshop together, which is so much fun. But, you know, some of the ideas are, um, you'll be working with students and are you going to teach them how to make their own brushes? Um, yeah, well, what, I, what we'll be doing is that I'll be teaching the five best brushes that I know work really well and can stand the test of time. So oh, yes. there will be, uh, you know, there will be some ephemeral brushes in there as well because okay. I think that they're really, really important. But there'll be things like the smudgy brush that I love, which happened out of an accident. Really? And, <laughs> and because I was doing, I made this really beautiful little, little, little brush and it had beautiful plant fibres, mm -hmm. but because they hadn't been properly dried out, they were lovely and bendy. So the, the first marks were really, really interesting, but I'd embroidered on this, on the brush handle and it was looking really, really good. Then when I started to use it two or three weeks later, it had dried out oh. and it, the, the brush head had totally deconstructed. <laughs> and I thought, oh, mama. <laughs> But then I decided what I'd do is I don't want to waste the head. So I ended up doing, putting like a little bit of wadding on the top of it right. and then sticking into it. Nice. And then that became the, the beginning of what I call the smudgy brush. Oh, that's fabulous. I now make into, I can, I've made them for one artist in Sydney and it's like, it would be about, uh, uh, would be about five inches diameter. 
Wow. And I wanted to push it in her, like push it so that it ended up smudging and drew the paint and around. That's so exciting. But when you dip it into ink, it will make like these, you know, like a big line like this okay. here. Sure, sure. So like, a, you know, you can do linear work or you can then use it to sort of make circular works as well. And, and it's just the most, it's one of my favourite, my absolute okay. favourite brush. Okay. I also get them to do a feather brush and I also get them to do a very long, um, hang on and I'll just go and get it, sure. which is my favourite. Okay. Yeah, if you want to grab your favourite brushes, let's see them.